guys, it's Elizabeth, Finding Elizabeth, or LA Liz if you prefer. I actually prefer that. Uh, VSG Bobby, I think, gave me that nickname when he was here for Obesity Help. Um, and I like it a lot better than Finding Elizabeth now because you know what? I wasn't really lost. I was just covered in layers and layers of fat. <laughs> but anyway, I don't think I can change my YouTube name. So that's what it is, Finding Elizabeth. And I'm here for my week 28 post-op VSG surgery update. It's Monday, October 28th, 2014. Um, just gonna jump into the stats because I've got a lot I wanna talk about today and I wanna try to keep it as brief and succinct as I can. So I had, um, I started my weight loss journey in January of 2014 um, at a weight of 402 pounds. I had surgery on April 14th, 2014 at Kaiser South Bay in Southern California, and I weighed 360.6 pounds. Last week, I weighed 259.2 pounds, and this week, I weigh 257 pounds. So that's a 2.2 pound loss since last week, 103.6 pound loss since surgery, and 145 freaking pounds since January. 10 months, 11 months, whatever. Never, ever, ever, ever thought that was possible. Uh, but here I am. So what's really, <laughs> I have this, I think it's called Monitor Your Weight app and that I enter my weight into every day. And I noticed today what my BMI was what I, when I started and what it is now. When I started, it was 68. 68, I think what's normal, like 25. Um, and today it's 42.8. And yes, 42.8 is still probably super morbidly obese or whatever. But um, Kaiser only performs weight loss surgery on you if you are 40 uh, BMI or greater and have no co comorbidities, which I didn't have any comorbidities. So I'm pretty close to not being able to qualify for weight loss surgery. I'm also, because my weight was a lot higher than most of the people who do videos, I've been keeping a list of who's starting weight I'm passing. I know um, last week I noted, noticed that I passed it um, banded Wendy's starting weight. I, Betty Lou, who let me know I <laughs> had passed her starting weight. I think I have now passed Leanne's starting weight. Um, so that's a good feeling. Um, anyway, so moving forward, doing well. I think when, um, I hit 150 pounds loss, I might do a skin video. I haven't done any like full body videos or full body shots or whatever because um, I'm usually doing this by myself and it's kind of complicated to do. But I actually feel, for having lost 150 pounds, I still have 117 to go. But for, ha or right now, lost 145, I still have 117 to go. Um, I think my skin's holding up pretty well. I mean, the two things that I really dislike are the hangy, 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 and this on my neck. But I mean, my stomach doesn't look great, my thighs don't look great, but they don't look nearly as bad as I thought they would. Like I said, we still have another 100 pounds to go, but I just thought I'd do, at 150 pounds, I'll do a skin video to show you what 150 pounds lost looks like. Okay, I have a couple of quick, uh, just like general weight loss surgery related things to throw out, and then I wanna talk more about like that emotional um, obsessive behavior kind of thing. So let me see. Oh, first of all, I think I mentioned last week that I had, after watching Hard World Heather's videos, I decided to try Quest Bars again. Um, I'm still not a huge fan, but I can tolerate the apple pie ones and the um, chocolate chip cookie dough ones. And I think Inquiring Minds need to know that for the first time since surgery, so for the first time in six months since I've been eating Quest Bars this week, I can poop every day without um, taking any drugs to make me do that. I know everybody wanted to know that, but... Um, Hey, I guess Quest Bar a day keeps the x lax away. I don't know. Anyway, my um, my hair has pretty much stopped falling out, I think. However, it is weird. It's The texture is weird. It feels really fly away. I mean, I need a haircut, but it feels um, just different than it did before. And I just wanted to throw that out there to see if that has happened to anybody else and if they have any products that they might recommend for that. And I want to say that I've decided I am for sure going to the Chicago meet and greet that's over, um, I think, St. Patrick's Day weekend. And I just want to encourage other people to do that. Chicago's, you know, a pretty cheap flight from anywhere. So, 
going to be doing that. And there's a rumor that maybe um, if Jennifer Bleacher goes, maybe she and I might get a tattoo. I don't know. We shall see about that. But, um, okay. So, this is what I have to say about how I, um, this was the week where I ate everything in the house that wasn't nailed down. I want to preface it by saying how much I love my YouTube and Facebook weight loss surgery community friends. Um, I really don't know. <laughs> Patty and I sort of joke about this, that I really do think that people uh, who make videos are more successful. At least it seems like they are to some of the people I just meet who've had weight loss surgery that aren't involved in this community. And I think part of that's the accountability of it, but part of that is like the true support from a community that, um, you know, you're not going to have in your day-to-day -day life, you're not going to have access to hundreds of people who had weight loss surgery every day to read about what they're doing or watch their videos and see what they're doing. And it is super helpful. Um, you know, I, there are people who give great information. I, um, what do my notes say? Like, gotta pimp the Betty Lou Who. She doesn't make videos, but if you aren't friends with her on Facebook, you need to go do that immediately. She had put up this little, I don't know if you can see this on here, what it is, but I put a copy of it on my Facebook page. But she put up this little chart that she did. She just, I mean, she's pretty fresh out of surgery. But what it is, is a goal sheet, and she only tracks a few things. Exercise, protein, water, vitamins, and a section that's called detour, which is like for those things that you screw up on. And I thought this was such a great idea because um, I think probably a lot of people who are overweight have really perfectionist tendencies. I do. Um, and that really screws me up because it makes me procrastinate and it makes me like, I'll set a list of goals that has like a hundred of these and then get upset with myself when I don't follow through. So um, this is just, I think she put it over, or she had originally said she was going to put it over scale to keep her from weighing more than once a week. But um, I just stick it on my refrigerator because I weigh every day because I need that for an accountability tool. And I just think this is really cool. And I'll be sharing this on Facebook once a week as another way to keep myself accountable. And it really does because it's like if it's 7 o'clock and I've only had 48 ounces of water, I'm, um, I don't know if people pleasers is the right word. But whatever, I like people to think I'm a good student. <laughs> I'm a teacher's pet. So I'm going to drink that 16 ounces of water so that when I post this on Facebook, it will say that I had 64 ounces of water every day. I know it should be intrinsic, but hey, that's where I'm at. It isn't. And um, so I think this has been really helpful. She also has a blog, um, and she posted a blog on Sunday. I'll link to it down below about uh, the the scoop on protein. And she, uh, her Sunday posts are Sunday science. And so she, all the stuff that she posts about in that blog are based on um, actual research, which is always a good thing because the internet and Dr. Google can be a, um, a funny thing. So all the information that is out there is incredible. Just the general support. I came home Friday afternoon um, from a, a long meeting in LA and I walked up to the door and I could see because I'm old and I can't read without my reading glasses. I could see that there was a package in the front of the door and it looked like it was addressed to somebody who's Name started with an L, and I was like, who is that? Oh, God, some neighbor got their package delivered here, and now I'm going to have to go find them. And I looked, and it was addressed to Lizzie Beth. And I knew right away who that was from. That was from uh, Leanne, and she had sent me some clothes she had grown out of, and I wasn't expecting. And it was just such a, just a nice surprise to come home. And you know what? Even if there hadn't been anything in the box, and it had just said Lizzie Beth, that made me happy when I, when I walked up to the door. Um... And that leads me into the other thing that I think this community is so uh, great for, which is just sharing um, insight. Let me go into the eating everything under the sun, and then I'll talk about the next part of why I love my YouTube community. Um, I think this started like right before I got sick. I started to, I don't know, I started, I've been doing fine with the empty nester thing, but I started to miss my son a bit. As stupid as this sounds, I had started watching the Gilmore Girls, which I had never watched before, and like the relationship between the mom and daughter uh, just made me think about him a little bit more. Not that I don't think about him, but miss him a little bit more. And I found myself, for the first time, um, since he's moved out, because I did do this for him, ordering Domino's pizza and wanting to eat Domino's pizza and wanting to eat like Domino's pizza like I had eaten before. 
I could barely eat one piece, which was great, but it's that behavior that um, worries me. And I really see that it's all around emotional stuff. So then I got sick, and when I was sick, my stomach was really upset, and I could on I only felt like I could eat. I mean, I only wanted very specific things. And of course, what were those specific things? Those specific things were fast food related items. Those were biscuits from Carl's Jr. Those were, I can't believe I'm admitting this, quarter pounder with cheese and french fries from McDonald's. Now, I can only eat, you know, a couple of bites of this stuff, but I don't need to be going through the drive-thru. That is not, <laughs> that's not okay. But I didn't eat very much and I lost weight that week because I had been sick, but it was just that whole mentality. And then it seemed even worse um, last week after I was better and I was getting back into the grind on, um, I was just eating a lot and eating in a way that is very compulsive. So I think it was Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday, I don't remember. I had made dinner for um, my stepdaughter and her husband who just had a baby and I was gonna take it over. I'd made like tri-tip and baked potatoes and I stopped at the um, grocery store on the way to pick up a hot loaf of French bread and I picked up one for the, I picked up one for them to stick in with all the food, and I picked up one for me, which not good. I ate. I mean, I made myself sick eating that night. Um, it. Ugh. I haven't felt. I haven't eaten to a point where I've made myself sick. I mean, I've eaten to where you take too bite a bite too much and you feel yucky. But this was like. This was like stuffing my face with French bread. I probably, over the course of an evening, had like four pieces of French bread. And I felt, after the last one, I don't think I could eat the last one, but I thought it was stuck. I felt like I was going to vomit. I felt awful. I don't know if it was dumping, but my heart was a little racy. I just felt awful. And then that night, I was like, what are you doing? And I got into that thing of being really negative. And that night, um, I saw two videos well, actually, I think I'd seen Phil's the night before. So Fat King's Phil did a video, um, which I'm sure everybody knows about, everybody's seen, but I'll link to it below, where, um, uh, I don't know, he just talked about some emotional stuff that really made me think about life. And then that night that I did my eating binge, uh, Sarah Nerd in Oregon had posted a video of, um, like a pre-op video she had done for herself. So as to remind herself what, um, what being overweight had done to her. And it just so hit home with me at that moment. And that people will share their stories, their lives, their emotions. I mean, both of these videos were very, I mean, obviously emotional and authentic um, and difficult for these people to make. And... Sarah's video just like kicked my ass back into gear. It's like, I am not going back to that place. I am not stopping here. 257 pounds, fuck that. I'm getting to my goal and I'm not going to let these compulsive behaviors kill me. So that's another reason I love the YouTube community. Uh, and I'm gonna watch those videos every week. I'm gonna watch Phil's video and Sarah's video every single week. So, um, to remember that. Um, but anyway, that's just yet another reason I love the YouTube community. I, and then I, um, always for me, I've known that this, eat, that this eating thing, eating compulsively or eating emotionally is about something that's going on with me. And I joke with my therapist, or my therapist jokes with me a lot about how I just wanna, I wanna figure everything out. I'm not, I'm much better up here than I am down here. I want to think things through. Early in therapy, I would talk about something and then I would bring it up at the very end of a session and then I would leave and I would go away and try to mull it over in my mind and figure it out and come back the next day or next week or whatever and say, okay, well, here's what I figured out. This is what's going on. Well, I'm still doing that. That's not the best thing. I do it a little bit, but my therapist was like, that's not the point. You're supposed to like, we're supposed to figure it out together. Not so good at that. But anyway, so I'm trying to figure out why am I eating like this right now? I'm feeling really good. I am generally pretty darn happy in my life. And what, you know, it's funny how if you ask yourself your question, if you ask yourself the questions you want the answer to and you're just quiet, um, 
the answer will come right back to you. And it did to me. And the answer was, I am feeling very under the gun in relation to work because I missed all that time when I was sick. I'm feeling very pressured. I'm feeling like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm not being the teacher's pet. I'm not getting all the work done I needed to do. There were a bunch of things that were um, due and I had been too sick to do them. And I was just um, caught in that feeling like I was a disappointment to the people who I worked for. So, but once I knew it, I mean, first I'd already gotten back on track because of the videos and because of the Betty Lou Who patented um, tracking device. But um, I also, uh, realizing that, because once I know it, I can do something about it. And once I know it and it's in my conscious mind, it's not in my subconscious making me want to eat shit <laughs> because it's there. It's real. I know what it is. I know what I can do to go fix this. I can make a list and prioritize instead of getting, you know, going and sitting in front of my email where there's a thousand emails and getting overwhelmed by what to do first. I can make a list and do those things. And that's what I did this weekend and I feel much better. So, um, anyway, I had everything that wasn't laid down. I'm back on track. I still lost weight this week. And I think it's really, I mean, honestly, I think it's because of the sheet that I lost weight because even just a couple of days, I kicked it back into gear with water. I made sure to exercise every day. Um, so anyway, thank you, YouTube community. You're the best. And then I wanted to, oh, oh geez, this is really long. 16 or 18? I'm so old. Okay, 16. I'm going to go really fast. Um, I want to talk really quick about an NSV. Just like a super amazing NSV I had on Friday. I wrote about it on Facebook, so sorry if you've already read it. It was long there. I'm going to try to make it short here. I um, had a meeting on Friday for to sort of interview for a consulting gig. I mean, I'm already, I've already been working for them, but it was the first time I had met with one of their founders who is a... Um, you know, a relatively famous uh, journalist who, older journalist who's been around forever and who I really respect and who um, my dad, who like isn't that impressed by much when I told him I had lunch with him was like, oh, wow, he's my hero. But usually going into that meeting pre-weight loss surgery, first, I don't know if I would have even taken it. I would have come up with a reason not to do it and let's figure this out on the phone. And then I would have just felt uncomfortable in my body, which I didn't. I couldn't find a parking place. I had to park my car like nine blocks away from the restaurant, which in California doesn't happen that often because people don't like to walk here. And before I would have been all sweaty. I would have been, I don't know. I just would have been so anxious about the meeting and about what I look like and about what does that say about me and about people having to get past that to like me and see that I'm um, reasonably intelligent. And I didn't feel that at all. I felt so comfortable in my own skin. I am certainly, you know, nowhere near skinny. Um, but I just feel so good in my body and in myself now. And I don't feel ashamed or embarrassed. And um, I noticed that I could like be more authentic and be... Um, I don't know, be playful a little bit and feel confident about what I was saying. And I know that so much of that has to do with the weight that I've lost. So that was just really, really incredible. And uh, it ended up, we ended up spending like four hours over lunch. And at the, at one part during the meeting, he said to his colleague who I, um, had been working with already because you know we meet with these people all these consultants all the time this is like the eighth one and usually I'm glazed over in the first 15 minutes but I have a really good feeling about this and our lunch was like I this I said four hours long and then he walked me back the nine blocks to my car and it was just really awesome and it felt really good and so that was just like a huge NSV and then just some quick shout outs I want to give a shout out to Jennifer Bleacher just because she's so amazing and she does so much for the community and she looked so frigging hot on bariatric divas last night in her um, Maleficent costume she just seems so um, I know I've used authentic it's the word of the day a bunch in this video but so authentic and um, really great I want to give a shout out to Melly May and VSG Bulldog. They have both lost more than 50 pounds and it just seems like they had surgery yesterday. I saw on Facebook that Lynette, um, I think it's VSG Lynette, Lynette VSG, who knows, Lynette um, lost 100 pounds. So congratulations, L Lynette. 
you guys um, are really so awesome and I just want to say thank you to everyone. To those I know, to those I don't know who are watching, you have um, really helped and inspired my journey. So I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.